beautiful day, Pentecost Sunday, which is the birthday of the church. Today is the gift where the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles who were locked in the upper room. How many of us have been locked in our houses? And it's time, as we say, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into the house of our soul, the garden of our soul, and allow him to do his good work. And so as we enter into this Mass on Pentecost Sunday, our Mass is for the repose of the soul of Elmer Bittner. We've also had two deaths in the parish yesterday. One was a wonderful parishioner, Michael Tester, and also Leo Volk, two of our parishioners who passed away. And so let's keep them in our, our prayers, and let us also keep um, their family. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now, to prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our scripture readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. Staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one of them was speaking in their own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are, are not all of these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pomiphila, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both converts to Juda Judaism and Jews, creations and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your spirit 
and renew the face of the from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. What, who produces all of them in everyone? To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, through many, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Let my prayer rise before you like incense, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were closed for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had showed this and said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, 
he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. You and I, when we hear that word breath, and when we think about how we visit with people, we're almost afraid to share our breath because of the fear that somehow we're going to either receive, get sick, or give someone sickness. But not the breath of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, fills us with strength upon strength. That's the gift of our God placing life in our souls. Just that we don't have physical life, but we have something deeper. We have something that goes beyond the physical person, but it's the way that the Lord gives us the spiritual life. I don't know if any of you know, but I started a garden. I am now a proud owner of Lot 68, at the community gardens here in Devil's Lake. And one of the things in the last three weeks, I have learned that the garden is a lot like the spiritual life. One, with planting the garden, I appreciate, and don't forget, when your garden grows, to continue to bring vegetables to the rectory. We love them all. But I realize what it takes to get to the harvest. It's a long Hall. First of all, you have to have ground that's broken up and that's soft. Then what you do is you have to take the seed and you have to plant it. And you make rows and you start to plant. Then what happens, you have to baby it because you start to water and you see things starting to come up and you think, is this the plant? This is my first garden in 53 years. I don't know. I'm going... Is this what a tomato looks like? Is this what a bean looks like? Um, and I have seen how certain people baby their gardens. I saw there's the cutest little couple. I married them about two years ago. They were sitting on their little behinds going and pulling out all of these little blades of grass. And I came past them and I said, boy, you really have to do a lot of work in order to have a good garden, you have to make sure you take good care of it, Father. And I said, well, if you get done here, come and help me. But they were pulling out these little blades of grass. And I've learned in the last few weeks, made lots of friends, you don't have a, a shortage of people telling you how to garden. I have learned lots of things about, I need to make sure that I have some powder so that I can save my potatoes from the potato blight, and all sorts of things. There's people who build apparatuses out there, and I talked to one man, big box, over a, a piece of wood hanging down, and this is where his vines are supposed to go and for the tomato plant to climb up in there so that what happens is that they don't sit on the ground and get rotted. And he built this a couple years ago, and how good it works. What's my point? My point is, look at what it takes to make a garden just get started and to grow. And that's a lot like for us. Sometimes when we can't see the growth, sometimes we wonder if God is really with us, don't we? God, if this is what happens, such violence in the world, where are you when the, all this evil comes around? Where are you? Why don't you take sickness away? But what happens when we start to be patient, and that's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden you start to see things happening. It's almost like those little beans shooting up all of a sudden. And that's the Holy Spirit, what's filling our hearts and our souls. But the Holy Spirit works with us. He doesn't make us all spring up with weeds and grass. Then what happens? You have to take care of the garden of the heart, don't you? You have to hoe it. Sometimes you have to spend a lot of times pulling out those little grasses. Sometimes we water weeds and rocks. 
And we have to try to get rid of those things through living a life of virtue in communion with God. The garden and the garden of the soul look forward to one thing, eternal life. That's the harvest time. And what kind of a harvest are we making? I'm going to share something with you, and just to conclude with this, but in the Bible, does everyone have their Bible with them? That's right. We don't even have missalettes or hymn books in the pews. What am I talking about? Bringing the Bible. But in the Bible, one of the things in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians, it says this. It talks about what is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you're living a life with the Holy Spirit, or you're living a life according to the flesh. And the flesh, as we know, never brings growth. What it does is it makes us heavy, it makes us sad, it brings depression. But living according to the Spirit brings life and that we can have life to the full. And that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is what it says in the 22nd verse of the 5th chapter of the book of Galatians. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these there is no law. Isn't that interesting? That to practice these there's no law to continue to say it's limited. But these are what St. Paul says, if the Holy Spirit has been also the Holy Spirit's with us, but we don't allow the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and our souls. This is the weeds and rocks that will grow in the heart and the soul against the Holy Spirit. The works of the flesh are very plain. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit. Party spirit doesn't mean that you can't have a nice party. It means joining with others who will take you in a place that won't bring you life. Envy, drunkenness, and crowsing. And then St. Paul says, be warned against this because the Holy Spirit can't work and cannot grow in the midst of this garden of the soul. I was told yesterday when I went out to water my garden, got a little gossip from the garden people. And it's my next door neighbor. And they said, last year, the people who had your garden, they didn't take care of it. They let it go to weed. So you're going to have a tougher time taking care of that garden plot. And it is. It's terrible. I think that there's lots of rocks. There's all sorts of dead plants I'm taking out of there. And the weeds are coming up great. But does it mean that because of the toughness of that, that I quit and say, well, it was like that, I'm just not going to care. You and I influence each other to become better people in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you bring that joy and live that in your home? Young people, how do you respond at home? Um, I uh, was very bothered last night. There was a young girl here. They weren't parishioners of, our, of ours, but it looked like she was forced to come to church. She was sitting over here by the 12th station, and it was such a bother to me because through the whole Mass, she went like this. I was touching her face all the time, and so I was trying not to watch her. She didn't want to be there. But you know what? Through the whole Mass, I prayed for this young girl, and I asked that the Holy Spirit would come to her. So what happens... I really wanted to see if I could find her after Mass. And one of the things with all I could try, I couldn't find her. But what I am, I'm still praying for her. Us who are middle-aged, how often we work with impatience. We all want things to happen right away, and things aren't going as fast as we wish. Watching the garden grow, water it, be patient. Those who are in their twilight years. It's one of the things 
is sometimes we get hurt very easily and we start to grow angry in our hearts and our souls because people don't come around as they once did. Where are the kids? Why don't they come and visit? And what happens is that we can even have that kind of anger that billows up in our hearts and our souls towards others or things we don't understand. What is it to say? We're all in this together. The Holy Spirit works when we respond and open our hearts, and the Holy Spirit works through us to help and assist others. So think about how your garden of your soul is. Are you watering weeds and rocks? Or are you allowing the Holy Spirit and you're working along with God in your prayer life, reception of communion, and that you're trying your best every day? That's what God wants. He doesn't expect you to be perfect because perfection in the world will never get. Perfection in God, we will. If we cooperate the way that we have been made, that's what it means to grow in perfection. God made us body and soul unity, and when we respond to God, the Spirit grows. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear family, let's stand. What a beautiful gift that we have in the Holy Spirit is our baptism and confirmation that we cooperate with God in the gifts he's given us and the grace he has bestowed upon us. And so let us now pray together, opening our heart to the watering of our garden of our souls. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus, help us out of the muck of the struggles of life, and that we can see with patience, with endurance, with openness of heart, that your Holy Spirit helps us each moment, each hour, each day, that as we go through life, we're never abandoned. And so, Lord, we bring our prayers to you and ask you to answer our prayers, our needs, our petitions. For the Holy Catholic Church, born on this day of Pentecost, may both its clergy and its people be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we may be one body in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in medical care and the medical sciences, may God continue to give them the knowledge, skills, and compassion to care for the sick and seek ways to end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are troubled in spirit, may they know the peace of Christ through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our RCIA program, and for our third grade children whose reception of confirmation and First Holy Communion have been delayed by the pandemic. 
May they look forward with patience and eager anticipation for their upcoming sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ongoing generosity from our parishioners who are still able to contribute so that our parish of St. Joseph's may be able to pay our staff and continue our good work of strengthening the Catholic faith in the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in our parish, especially Leo Volk, and for Elmer Bittner, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and unleash your goodness and love within us, and we allow you to move about our whole being. We promise to follow you faithfully today and every day, and when moments are tough, that we will endure all things through, with, and in you. As you live, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, reigning forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our offertory.
pray, family, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord God, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice of the Mass and graciously lead us into all truth. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mysteries to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the Pray and will offer the first Eucharistic prayer with its special inserts for Pentecost Sunday. And let us ask the Holy Spirit to move our hearts and our souls to deeper faith. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise where they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you the eternal God living in true. Celebrating that most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse and our holy patron saint, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all the saints. In all things may we be defended through their merits and prayers by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, in humble prayer. We ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the holy altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Remember also, Lord, your servants, Elmer Bittner, Leo Volk, Michael Tester, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Give them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who? Those sinners. Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Opening our heart, and the gift of that comes from our God and his gift of the Holy Spirit, we now pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your church peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mise re reino. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mise re reino. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Christ. The body of 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 Christ. Give to the Holy Spirit, may He bless you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that the spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just by way of announcement, starting on Monday and next Sunday, Sunday, uh, Saturday, we'll be hearing confessions, and our confessions will be heard in the Mother Teresa Hall. Uh, I should, I'm sorry, in the in the Adoration Chapel, and I ask that those who go to confession that they go in through the uh, Mother Teresa Hall to avail themselves of confession. We heard in the Scriptures today that that gift was given to the apostles to forgive sins. That we know how we are with the Lord, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Also, today, uh, and if you remember, Ashley Grunthove, who was a uh, religious education director here at St. Joseph, she's getting married today at the cathedral. And so we remember her, uh, her and ask God give her a holy and happy and a blessed marriage. You all have a good week. Keep up your smiles, kindness, and smiles do not spread coronavirus. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.